Hello and welcome to the Gideon's Garage Safety Briefing Summer Fall 2023. Uh, we're glad you're dialing into this short and informative video about our garage. So we have an update for you. Good news, we have no injuries so far in 2023 and we hope to keep that trend going. We also have no known damage to vehicles in 2023, which is great. And I want to thank you for everything that you're doing to make Gideon's Garage a success. Um, you can see the picture of Jonathan Grace there working the lift properly. Thanks, Jonathan. And to get your code, you need to email jmason2088 at gmail.com with the following. There'll be three mascots throughout the briefing. You write down the mascots and then write me the three mascots. That way we know you listen to the whole video. We also, this is something new this time, we'd like you to include your desired service position for the garage events. And we'll go over those positions in just a little bit, but just in the back of your mind, store that, hey, I'm gonna volunteer for a service position. And then a quick statement that just says you agree to the garage policies. Those are the three things you'll have to do to get your garage code. Uh, here's Miss Jean as we go over the themes through the briefing. Um, we want you to use the garage. We want you to use it for fixing vehicles. We want you to use it, more importantly, for ministry. And man, this is a great way to invite guys to our church family. So please keep doing that. We love that. We're so grateful for it. We want you to use the garage safely. Keep yourself safe and keep our church and this ministry safe. Um, as you use the garage, make sure that you're considerate of our neighbors and our other ministries. And we're going to have some uh, go over some responsibilities and opportunities to serve at the end of the briefing. So let's talk about access. Um, only active members of Farley Community Church can use the garage outside of scheduled events. That's what you're doing by getting your code today is that you'll be able to use it on your own schedule. Please understand that non-church members must be accompanied at all times by a Farley church member. This is an insurance requirement. Um, active members must agree uh, to the safety and policy briefing every six months. That's what you're doing by watching this video. There's a sign-in log that's in the back corner of the garage um, over by the, uh, the food side. Make sure you fill out the log every time you use it so there's a record of your use. We have to foot stomp that no man works alone. You must have another person with you in the garage. It can be your spouse, it could be a buddy, it could even be um, a child that's old enough to make a phone call uh, for help. Just make sure that no one works in a garage by themselves. Um, there is a bathroom key that's available by the entry door. Um, it's it's uh, tied to a wrench. And just be aware that right now we don't have to worry about winterization, but when it gets cold again, um, the, the bathroom may be winterized. Okay, personal protection equipment. There's a lot of personal protection equipment that's available for you in the garage and we encourage you to use it. There's an eye wash station, there's latex gloves, there's safety glasses, there's multiple rubber aprons, and two ABC fire extinguishers. If you ever notice that the safety equipment is not in place, please talk to myself or talk to Tony South and we'll get it replaced right away. Now, get your pencil out. Here's our first mascot. This is Billiken from St. Louis University, St. Louis, Missouri. So again, Billiken from St. Louis University. Let's talk about keeping the garage clean. So many things are going well at the garage and we're super grateful for that. We would ask that we could do a little better on the cleanliness department. Uh, we've got a post note here, leave it better than you found it. Um, we really want to foot stomp this. Uh, Patrick Blood, God bless him, he's a volunteer. He doesn't even go to Farley, but he took 12 five quart containers of oil out of the garage. Uh, that's a lot. And we, Patrick, if you watch this, thank you for doing that. But let's do better with getting our, taking our own oil when we do oil changes. Make sure everything's turned off. Uh, make sure you close both of, both of the fence gates. I've seen a number of times where the gates have been open. Um, if you drain a fluid, be it coolant or oil or transmission fluid, please take it with you. Also, don't leave large trash items in the garage, in the trash cans in particular. Like sometimes like a CV axle for something might fit in the can, but it's very difficult to get the can out. We've been making a concerted effort to clean the garage after uh, large events, and it should be, uh, the cleanliness should be improving. We're just asking everybody to do their part. Understand that if you need uh, overnight storage, that's possible. Just talk to me, we'll get you scheduled. And if you have a complete vehicle, it can be stored in the three spots up by the dumpster. Please do not park vehicles outside the garage. Next, let's talk about tools. Um, we, we ask you to return your tools to where you found them each time. That makes them easier to find. Um, you can take tools out overnight, but you need to let me know so I'm aware of it um, and we know where all our tools are. We order new tools almost every month. So if you see something you're like, hey, it would be really great if we had this, let me know and we'll add it to the next month order if we can. 
And in the top picture, you can see the new shelf that John Calloway made in the back corner of the garage. And it's awesome. We've got all of our specialty tools on the shelf. So thanks to John for that. Also thanks to Stephen Lomax for labeling the tools. And I talked to Stephen just the other day. We're going to do even more labeling. So uh, thanks for that. Um, here we go. We got our second mascot. This is the purple cow. Uh, you probably guessed that by the picture. And it's from Williams College. Uh, so again, the purple cow from Williams College. I don't know how you get riled up to cheer for a purple cow, but apparently they do. Let's talk about lifts. Uh, we got Chuck here. Uh, some people think Chuck's sleeping. I wanna go with the idea that Chuck is praying. But anyways, thanks Chuck for being our lift poster child. I wanna thank everybody for using the lift safely. We've not had any incidents with the lifts, which is great. Um, we have had some problems with loads not being centered. Be aware that loads have to be centered both vertically and horizontally and especially on a heavier vehicle if you get it too close to one post or the other you put a lot of wear and tear on the lift uh, tony salas just had the lifts professionally adjusted for us which is great that is not a cheap process so please let's all watch each other make sure everything is centered both vertically and horizontally um, also the scissor lift, you can use scissor lift whenever uh, uh, that's available to all users. Understand that do not raise the scissor lift without weight on it because it can be very difficult to get the scissor lift to come back down. Um, if you're going to use a two post lift, you need a sign off from Jeff Slagle. If you have a previous sign off, that is still valid. We have lots of events. Our, our garage schedule is uh, pretty firmly esta established now. Um, we alternate the car care clinic and the open garage day on the second Saturday of each month and you can see the dates there on the screen and we also have the Wednesday garage night which is on the last Wednesday of the month except in December I think we moved it up uh, earlier for this uh, little holiday called Christmas so um, that's coming um, be aware that at all of our events we are open to the community we're going to talk more about this in a minute but you wouldn't believe the number of phone calls and texts that we get with people that have heard about our services and they're desperate for help with their cars. That's part of why we're pushing guys with a get the code, you need to volunteer and help. More on that in just a second. So let's talk about events since they're super busy. Make sure that we only have active workers under the lifts. That's a safety, that's a safety thing. We're having an expanded list of what I call no workies. These are tasks that are either unsafe or too, um, too risky to take on for the shop. So for example, we're not able to perform airbag work of any kind. Please do not remove spark plugs from a Ford Modular V8. That's the 4.6 and the 5.4. They're great engines, but they have some really bad characteristics when it comes to spark plugs. So please do not do that work. Also, we are unable to work on electric vehicles on the powertrain. If somebody needs a brake pad on an electric vehicle, we probably could do that, but we are unable to work on the electric vehicle powertrain due to safety. Make sure that any vehicle we take the wheels off, that the lug nuts are torqued. Even if you use the torque sticks, make sure you check it with a torque wrench. If you don't know what the torque spec uh, is, use all data. We've got the membership there at the garage. Use it. Make sure you look at it. Please be very careful about trash talking. Some of the cars come in and they can be kind of dirty or even smelly, and it's real easy to make a comment. The last thing we want to do is offend someone that we're trying to earn the right to minister to them. So please be careful with that. Uh, one thing that we're trying to do is to limit the extent of the jobs. We've had some very long car care clinics, and so we are uh, experimenting with the best time to stop taking new jobs. It'll be somewhere between 10.30 and 11 on Saturdays. Um, we also are trying to limit the jobs to two hours of shop time or less. Again, with the intent to help people, but let's not get into an engine replacement. Um, prayer, please don't just fix the car. We really want to pray for everyone in Jesus' name that they come to our garage that we're going to pray with them so please do that and this last point you may not have thought of but we have an awful lot of workers that aren't formally affiliated with Farley um, they come from different Baptist churches they may come from different denominations we even have a lot of guys that don't have any public affiliation with the church yet <laughs> so please welcome them if you see a guy you don't know he may have a buddy that's here that's invited him to the garage and he's there just to see what we're doing it's a great opportunity to minister to men on our campus so please make the most of that now let's talk about event responsibilities as i alluded to earlier demand for our services is only increasing and anytime you can help is greatly appreciated the expectation going forward is that if you get a garage code, we know you can't make every event that we have in a garage, but you should be making events that we have in a garage. 
you'll get a text or an email from me or some people do Facebook Messenger, however it is that we get in touch, but we're gonna try to assign positions in advance and you can see the listing of positions there on the screen. I'm gonna go over each of those positions in just a second, but please, as part of your, your briefing today, you're gonna include your three mascots and the position that, that interests you, excuse me. So these are our roles and responsibilities. We have an opener for each night. That person is gonna arrive early and their job is to open up the garage, get coffee going if it's a Saturday morning. They're gonna put the car, the signs out um, on the car clinic days. They're gonna open the restrooms and make sure that the air compressor is working. The next position is the ticket taker. This is the person that gets the tickets and writes down, hey, this is the information on the car that we need. And more importantly, they write down the prayer request. So they're gonna interview the person, they take tickets, and they're gonna coordinate with the trail hoss, who's the person that's gonna actually coordinate how the jobs get scheduled in the bays. They also will stop taking tickets um, uh, at a certain time so that we don't have too long of an event. Trail Hoss uh, is the person that's gonna lead opening prayer. They're gonna get there early. Um, they're also gonna coordinate with the ticket taker to get the jobs in the right order. They're also gonna co uh, coordinate with the parts runner to make sure we have all the parts. They will assign the jobs to the bay and their most important job is to coordinate prayer for each person that we're ministering to. They also make sure that the, each person that needs groceries gets groceries in their cars and they will have the task of assigning, like if we get in over our head to assign a job to an offsite mechanic. The bay lead is pretty self-explanatory. We have the three bays, scissor list, the tall two post, the short two post, and then we have an outside small job that sometimes we'll use for air conditioning. But their job is to focus on completion of tasks. These are generally our more senior mechanics, and they're gonna focus on getting the job done. They can talk to the trail hoss or the parts runner to make sure they have the parts that they need. And their job is not so much to do the work, but to supervise and mentor the people um, so that the people that are working, that are volunteering, they get their hands dirty. And the, and the bay needs, they know this, and they also get mega bonus points if they have the cleanest bay. So again, we're stressing cleanliness. Uh, last page of roles and responsibilities, the bay workers, these are the guys that show up and volunteer, and they're directed by the bay leads. We try to have two cleaners and closers each night. They're gonna do a lot of important tasks, but basically they're gonna take the signs down, they're gonna pull the trash, um, they will take a heavy metal like brake pads, CV joints, that sort of thing, rotors, all that stuff, so that they can be recycled. A lot of times they'll just put it out in front of their house because we got scrap guys that go around. They're gonna help uh, return the tools to where they were first from, and they'll lock and close the gates. Uh, hospitality, this has been uh, Drea and Tina. Uh, Drea brings a variety of foods and Tina usually brings uh, pizza, but they're the ones that provide lunch or dinner for us, which is great, and be sure to thank them um, when you see them. And then the parts runner is the person that, um, that goes uh, to O'Reilly's and actually uh, gets the parts there. We, the final position is we have a shopper. They, don't, they may not necessarily, you may not see them on an event, but they're coming in in between events. They're inventorying things like coffee, creamer, sodas, Gatorades to make sure that we have everything to keep everybody hydrated. So again, when you provide your three mascots, make sure you provide the position you're interested in serving in. Also, we have many opportunities to serve with the project cars. Uh, we get cars donated. Many people in the community have given us cars. Um, we've also bought some cars at auction. I wanna publicly thank Matt and Leanna Duran for their work on the Chrysler Town and Country van that we delivered recently. That was awesome, thank you. And also a new member to Farley, Tony Williams, for his work on a Buick Century, which we're getting ready to deliver tonight after Mike and I finish recording this video. Uh, spoiler, Mike, sorry. Um, and then <laughs> we have more, we have at least four cars in the hopper that are coming. And if you are interested in serving as a project lead on one of these cars, we have funds to buy the parts for the car. So you don't have to supply the funds, but we need someone to evaluate the car, work on the car, and coordinate the work on it. If you're interested in that, we'd love to have you help out. Again, Matt and Tony have done an awesome job, but there's room for you to serve also if you're interested. And please, as we've mentioned before, thank Chef Drea and Chef Tina. Okay, this is our last mascot and I'm looking on the notes slide and I don't have it. So we're just gonna make it up and we're gonna call the green guy from McDaniel. Um, if you know what it actually is, let me know. I just noticed that it wasn't in my notes. 
forgive me. Okay, last page. So to conclude, this is our garage briefing. In order to get your code, you've got to identify the three mascots. The third one, I just made up the name. Sorry about that. Let us know the desired service project or service position for the garage events where you would like to serve and a brief statement that says you agree to the garage policies. Um, the new code, um, you'll get it back by email, usually within a day or so, and the code is already valid. Tony's gonna put that in tonight, and the old code will no longer be valid on July 15th. If you need a two-post lift sign-off, be sure to talk to Jeff Schlegel, and now you have an access code. Thanks for everything you do for Gideon's Garage. God bless you.